Hello, and welcome to a detailed explanation of all of the texts from the ancient and classical era for Civ VI Gathering Storm and the New Frontier Pass. I'll be cutting off at the medieval era. I won't get too far beyond that. I'll talk a little bit about apprenticeship and machinery because they relate to your classical era decisions quite strongly. But beyond that, it's going to depend on your specific victory condition, and, and this video could take two hours long if I go through the entire tech tree. Instead, what I'd like to focus on is the early game, the first 50 to 75, maybe even 100 turns. Those are the most important in terms of influencing the outcome of a game of Civ. So these are where your consequences for your decisions are going to be the strongest in terms of whether or not you actually win this game. It's also where the science points are going to be scarcest. So the trade-offs between these texts are going to be the highest. And the boosts are going to be the most difficult and perhaps the most rewarding to get because every little advantage you can get early in the game increases your chances of snowballing. So before I get too far ahead of myself, if you like this content and find it valuable, please do give it a like because the algorithm makes me beg you for your love. Uh, also, let me know in the comments what kind of uh, tips and tricks you'll be interested in seeing in the future. I want to make what my audience wants in terms of uh, advice and guides and all that kind of stuff. And a subscription would really help. Right now, I have about a dozen subscribers, so I'm really not on the map at all. And you could help me uh, potentially grow my channel into something that's actually uh, going to reach more people. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you in just a moment. So before I get too far in terms of recommending specific texts, I want to talk about a guiding principle for how you might make this decision in just the general context that you'll find yourself in the game. You have to understand that Civ 6 is a race. The goal is to win the game faster than any of your opponents do. And that sounds a lot more profound than it actually is, but it does come with the implication that you should be efficient when you're approaching the tech tree. What that means is you shouldn't go for any text unless you plan on immediately using those texts in some way. For example, I have pottery selected right now. That means that when pottery finishes, I want to immediately start on a granary or I want to start getting into writing and potentially build my campus or I want to go into irrigation and improve a luxury. Something, uh, some implication that pottery was getting me to the next thing in my game. Now, I, the context might have me push away from pottery into archery, for example, if I look at the situation and realize, oh, I'm under attack, then I'll move away from pottery into archery. But I should really view that as sacrificing a little bit of early game science that didn't provide me any real advantage now. Advantages now are more important than advantages in the future. So as a rule, pick your text such that you are going to use the tech as soon as you unlock it. So with that advice out of the way, I want to talk a little bit about the ancient era milestones that you might want to beeline and work towards. The first one is holy sites. If you're going for a religion and you're playing on deity, you have to beeline your holy site, which means you need to work on astrology first. I'll leave a link in the cards to Potato's uh, guide to guaranteeing religion on deity. I think it's really important, really worth watching. But the gist of that is you have to make sacrifices in the early game. You have to get your holy site if you want a religion. If you're playing on lower difficulties, you have a little bit more leeway here. The next most important uh, milestone is archery. If you see an enemy within 10 tiles of you, you should essentially assume that you're going to go to war with that player. And you want to be able to defend yourself. This is a, a little bit of a contradiction to what I just said about making sure that you unlock your tech and then immediately start using it. What you should think about here is removing the science cost from acquiring archery. So if you get this down to, if you get it boosted, you get it down to where it'll only take you one or two turns of science to unlock archery, that's going to allow you to get archers whenever you want. The reason you don't want to fully build archers is because slingers are cheaper to produce. The production cost for an archer increases by 25 over the slinger, and you can no longer build slingers. So it's actually sometimes more dangerous to try to hard build archers. You want to build slingers and then upgrade them for 60 gold into archers. Okay, that aside, the next important milestone is writing and getting a campus. If you're trying to play from behind, which you are on deity, you will want every incremental advantage that you can get. And you should think of the campus as speeding up every other production or every other uh, tech you could produce in this tree. So if you have a really strong campus site in your capital, I would say you might even want to consider making your campus your first district because it's that important. Also, Pingala is a good first governor to pick. Next, we have iron, revealing iron on the map, and the encampment. 
uh, because these unlock the ability to go for a swordsman rush. If you get into uh, iron, you find the places where iron are, you settle those, and then you get into swordsman. Then you could potentially go to war very early and catch somebody before they actually have swordsmen. Having having just a, an era unit stronger than everybody is often enough to just totally obliterate that player. And lastly, uh, walls to be able to defend yourself. This is the least important because walls are so expensive and you have to actually hard produce them. So it's difficult to recommend those over other things like building swordsmen, for example. Building swordsmen and building archers are going to be a lot easier to defend your empire than building walls because walls are defense that are tied or that is tied to a specific city. But the good news is if you've built walls, chances are they're not going to be able to knock down the city as long as you have units in the area. And they don't have battering ramps, that is. So here's what I consider to be classical era milestones. First, in terms of importance, if you have the specific game type that requires it, is lumber mills. If you have a city that is really flat, doesn't have any hills that you can build mines on, doesn't have any production any other way, but it does have flat lumber mills, or a flat forest that you can build lumber mills on, that could be really good in terms of salvaging that city's ability to produce and that ability, the, its ability to get online for itself. So that's a really specific case, but that I might actually say is most important in terms of classical milestones. The next most important classical milestone for me is the harbor. And the reason is coastal cities tend to have pretty poor production until they get themselves online with some good fishing boats and with good shipyards with uh, the um, naval tradition cards swapped in. Uh, I want to ultimately make a harbor video. I'll leave a link in the cards if I ever do. But if you are building or if you have a lot of coastal cities and you want to build harbors in them, unlocking this early so you can lock in the price at a low production cost is really, really important. And also it gives you access to lighthouses, which give you trade routes and as you might know, traders are some of the best units in the game. Traders are good for increasing your gold output. They're good for improving your relationship with AIs to avoid war. They're good for completing trade routes and getting envoys with city-states. And they're also good for attacking AIs and city-states by allowing you to build roads that your military units can use to increase their, uh, their movement, how fast they get to the enemy. So harbor overall pretty good. One downside of going for celestial navigation so early is that it is entirely sunk science. It does not uh, proceed to any of the other texts in the game. So you're just dumping a bunch of science into celestial navigation, and you're going to hope to get the advantage of harbors. Okay, the next most important thing is commercial hubs, because like harbors, commercial hubs provide you with gold and traders, and traders are really good for all the reasons I just described. And lastly, the horseman rush. So if you reveal horses on the map with animal husbandry, and then you realize that you have an AI that you'd like to go take over, and you can get to horses quickly, then you might be able to secure yourself an early win if you go for horseback riding quick enough, i.e. if you beeline it. Another advantage of horsemen is you don't really have to run oligarchy to make them a, a strong military unit. Whereas with swordsmen, I tend to like to run oligarchy in order to make sure they get the job done. So in terms of medieval milestones, there are really two that you want to beeline. And one of them is apprenticeship because apprenticeship gives you plus one production to all mines. And it helps you get to a couple of the other medieval milestones, which are universities and knights. But like I said, I don't want to get too far. The other one that I really want you to consider is machinery with crossbowmen here. The AI will beeline crossbowmen practically every time. So if you're at war with a player or you anticipate going to war with a player, chances are they will have crossbowmen way before you do. You need to do everything in your power to get to your crossbowmen as quickly as you can as well because crossbowmen are very punishing. They're really, really strong units, especially if you're trying to play an era down. So a crossbowman for, versus an archer, crossbowmen can sometimes one-shot archers. They're just that good. And lastly, military engineering. Just because revealing Niter on the map allows you to get into your uh, Renaissance area units and allows you to set up some more extensive military campaigns. But I really would go for either apprenticeship or machinery in terms of decision-making. So now that I've talked about rough strategy in terms of early milestones, 
let's talk about openers. And the first one I want to talk about is animal husbandry. Animal husbandry is a really defensive opener because it gets you to archery faster. And it can be really powerful if you have horses in the area. So if you have a lackluster capital, chances are at least a couple of the tiles uh, have horses on them. And if you reveal horses, it will actually improve the yields of the tile. So you might get lucky if you have a, a really sucky capital. See, reveal horses on the map. See if you got them. Another strong thing about horses is it allows you to determine whether you can go for a horse rush. And it also allows you to sell those to the, the AI for gold. So it could influence where you settle your second city. Animal husbandry can also be used to improve a uh, luxury that has a camp on it. I wouldn't really talk too much about pastures, and I wouldn't talk about building camps for the sake of building camps. If there's not a luxury on it, the camp is not worth the early builder charge. The next thing I want to talk about is pottery. Pottery can be good for growth if you happen to be bee lighting a granary. I don't see too many reasons to do this. The, the main reason is if you have a really strong tiles in the capital, particularly if you have a wonder that you've settled next to and you're like, oh my gosh, all of these are insane. I just need to get as many citizens as possible as early as possible to work all these tiles. Then it might make sense to be in the granary. I can't really see many other reasons to, to go for a super early pottery beyond writing. Writing is the real reason to go for an early pottery because it allows you to build, finish an early writing. Writing allows you to finish an early campus and an early campus allows you to get literally all of these other benefits faster. So it's hard to underestimate the importance of a campus. If you have a strong campus in the capital, that's a really strong indication you should open with pottery. Irrigation is not worth really factoring into this consideration very much, or sorry, factoring into this decision very much. Uh, plantations are not a strong tile improvement. They just give you plus two gold like camps, but they are good for connecting luxuries and selling them to the AI. The problem with irrigation is it doesn't really give you any prerequisites for anything else. So this is really just sunk science. You'll come back and get this irrigation whenever you're ready to improve the tile. So don't factor it into your first tech decision. Lastly, writing can get you to currency. Currency can get you trade routes. So really strong. Uh, Pottery is a strong opener. Another one that you might want to go for is astrology. Only do this if you're going for a religion. And do not wait for the boost because you can't afford to wait for the boost. You want to use astrology to open to get a religion, nothing else. Let, let me just show you what astrology does for you. So astrology allows you to build holy sites. Great. Fantastic. It also unlocks celestial navigation after you also get sailing. Celestial navigation doesn't do anything for you besides get the harbor. And that will be way, way too early for you to really consider astrology. So just, just don't do this. If you're going to want to go for an early celestial navigation, first of all, it's just too early to beeline. But second of all, go for sailing first. Okay, and then mining. Mining is another one of the strong openers because it allows you to build mines. And mines are really good because first of all, you're going to be building mines on hills, which are already tiles that you probably want to work because they're good tiles innately. But mines are also good because they give you plus one production now on a tile that already has good production. And it gives you plus one more production for free when you research apprenticeship. So mining is really, really good. Getting an early mine will allow you to get some early production and Im improve your ability to snowball. The other thing about the mining side of the tree, it's the more military side of the tree here. So it can get you to prawns working faster, which gives you to iron, which gets you to a swordsman rush. So if you have an aggressive neighbor and you want to wipe them out, mining can be really strong because it allows you to take this exact path. And lastly, mining is uh, where you start to unlock some of these chops. So like chopping woods, chopping rainforests, chopping uh, quarries to put into early game wonders. It also unlocks the pyramids. So that's a, a few really strong reasons to go for mining. And then lastly, sailing. If you have founded a city on the coast and you have tiles to improve, you might want to be able to build the fishing boats, which just gives you plus one food. But if you have really strong tiles like whales or like turtles, it could be worth uh, improving. It also allows you to build galleys, which you could use to then explore the coast and find other places to settle that potentially would have uh, lower rivalry. But I probably wouldn't build a super early galley unless I knew that the map was like an archipelago map. Uh, galleys can also be used for era score if you're trying to avoid a dark age. 
Well, let's talk about rung two of the ancient ladder. And really, I've said everything I need to say about these. So I'm going to focus on these three. Masonry is just not one to rush. It allows you to build ancient walls. But this early in the game, you'll want to be building warriors and archers and slingers to defend yourself rather than uh, combat strength that's like glued to a city. I'd rather be able to move my units around to defend more than one city or potentially go aggro on the AI, get some cities, get some concessions from them. So ancient walls is not something to, to beeline. The pyramids are also not something to beeline. Usually you're, you're safe to build the pyramids until around turn 75 or so. And late pyramids can go as late as like turn 98, turn 100. So not a really strong reason to beeline masonry. And there's just nothing else here. Like if you want to knock over the walls of a city-state and use just two or three warriors to take out a city-state, you might be able to do that. So if they're like really close to you and you want their city now, maybe. But I, I don't think that masonry is a really strong thing to beeline. Let's talk about bronze working. Bronze working actually is a good thing to be line because it reveals iron on the map, which is good for information in terms of where to settle. It is good for uh, some uh, early game science, and it's also good for profit because you'd be able to sell that to the AI and for determining whether you are actually capable of a swordsman rush. Bronze working also allows you to build an encampment, which is a really essential district for any kind of military campaign. It makes all of your units better. It makes your units spawn closer to the enemy. It allows you to exert control over battlefields and, and defend your empire better. Encampments are, are, are decently strong. Lastly, there's a wheel. The wheel is good for building water mills, which are a really strong improvement. You have to be on a river to benefit from them, and they're pretty difficult to build as well. But you, you'll want to build a water mill pretty quickly if you if you have it unlocked. And also for heavy chariots. Heavy chariots are simply a good uh, option for an early war that's really conservative. So like, you don't have to worry about whether or not you have horses to get the horsemen or um, iron to get the swordsmen. They're, they're lower in terms of ultimate payoff, but they unlock faster and they can outclass warriors. And that's what typically the AI attacks you with is a bunch of warriors. And they have a type advantage against warriors. When it comes to your classical openers, that's really going to depend pretty heavily on your choice of medieval opener, with the two strong medieval openers being apprenticeship for greedy jerks and machinery for aggressive jerks. Just taking a thought experiment where we beeline apprenticeship for a second, which is something that I would not recommend that you do. If you look at the requirements, they're all pretty economic in nature, right? So when you spend time towards apprenticeship, you're spending time away from your military. Every point of science that you spend towards your military is a delay to apprenticeship, which is a really good economic boost. Likewise with machinery, when you're beelining machinery, you miss out on all of those economic techs. You do pick up good military techs, but spending points towards machinery means slowing down your economy, which just speaks to towards the push and pull of the game. Now, I wouldn't recommend that you beeline either way, but um, it's something to consider that time spent in the lower half of the tree is for safety. It's like putting the brakes on your economy, whereas here you're accelerating your economy at the expense of safety. Okay, actual classical openers here. Horseback riding is a good opener if you're going to uh, go for an early horse rush. That's the one exception to like potentially being able to have a military and going for um, an early apprenticeship is you might be able to rush people with horses if you actually have the horses. But you have to do that fast or you're going to be outclassed by crossbowmen. The AI gets their crossbowmen as quickly as possible and then crossbowmen versus your horses, your horses are going to have a tough time with that fight. Uh Ironworking can be good for early swords brushes, and I wouldn't really consider Jebel Barkal at all because the, the AI tends to build Jebel Barkal quickly, and it just has weird placement requirements. So I just don't think about it as like a part of the game. Like I just forget that it exists. Uh, currency could be a strong opener because it allows you to make additional trade routes. Trade routes, as I've already talked about, are strong for every player. 
and every strategy. And lastly, there's Celestial Navigation, which uh, could be a classical opener, technically speaking. Uh, I think that you probably would have had to spend some time in the ancient era going to like getting all the good economic texts and getting a couple cities online before you're really ready to uh, open with Celestial Navigation. Uh, we already talked about, though, like getting those harbors down and, and, and getting them online is the key to, to getting good coastal cities. I really would like to make a... a uh, coastal city video. I might do that in the future. Let me know if you're interested in the comments. So for rung two on the classical ladder here, there's really not much worth writing home about. We've already talked about the situational advantage of construction and lumber mills. Shipbuilding could also be a way to go if you're building or if you're playing on an archipelago map because uh, having your settlers embark and go settle those cities can be really strong. Uh, I don't really consider it a good classical opener just because it's like it's so much more expensive. It's going to take you a long time to get. Although I guess if you boost it by building galleys, eh, okay. Mathematics is something I delay quite a while, even if I'm going for Petra, because uh, chances are you need your Petra city to have a little time to get ready to build the Petra. And the longer you wait on mathematics, the more likely you are to get the boost, which is to build three specialty districts. It also allows you to build a diplomatic quarter, but I'm not convinced. Uh, first of all, there's a new frontier pass only. But second of all, I'm not convinced that the diplomatic quarter is something you need to rush. It only works if you have three or more envoys and only if you've built the consulate. So uh, I don't know about that one. It also allows you to build education or, or get an education and build your universities faster. But again, you'd have to be getting towards universities pretty quick. So I tend to delay mathematics. And lastly, there's engineering. Engineering allows you to build aqueducts, but that's not worth writing home about, at least not until you get some industrial zones down. And you can have those aqueducts give uh, adjacency bonus to more, more than one industrial zone. And then Machu Picchu can be good, but good luck building that, especially on Deity. The AI tends to love that one. And it also gives you catapults. The main advantage is it gets you closer to machinery. Machinery gets you siege towers. And I think machine or siege towers are better than catapults at taking down walls. It's situational. It depends on the situation. But also my expertise is not super strong in terms of military. You'd have to take my advice with a grain of salt there. I just like Siege Towers better. And that's going to do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching this, especially all the way through. If you want to help me out, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and click through on one of the recommended videos that I'm recommending to you right now. One of them probably going to be the uh, Ancient and Classical Civics, which is something to go along with this video. All right, bye for now.